Hi guys, so this is our Ducati Street Fighter V4S. Pretty much brand new and completely stock. We're gonna be completely transforming it using all of our parts, which we have available on our website. We'll be doing a lot of information about why we've chosen these parts, how they fit onto the bike, and basically do a build like we did back in 2014 with our Panigai 1199S, which is pretty much I believe the first full carbon Panigale build. I've put a link in the description below that you can see the video and it will kind of give you some idea of what kind of build this is going to undertake. Uh, I've got a good friend that I worked with many years ago who's a, an ex Ducati trained mechanic. He is going to be putting all the parts on it. I just end up breaking things if I try and fit them. As with all our parts, have them fitted by a trained professional as you know these bikes are dangerous or can be dangerous and if things aren't fitted correctly bad things could happen so yeah this is it totally standard in all its glory standard exhaust is a 2020 model the 21 have got a slightly different exhaust guard i've ridden this bike once first time i've been on a bike again for six years after becoming a father of twins so they're now five so now it's uh time for me to have some fun on bikes again and uh, enjoy two wheels. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the build. On the build today, we're going to be swapping out the OEM exhaust and we're going to be fitting the Zards. We've gone for the titanium versions, which are the titanium sleeves. Apparently, they're half the weight of OEM. I believe OEM is just over 10 kilos, the Zards are about 5 kilos, and they increase the brake horsepower by nine brake horsepower apparently. We will be having a dyno on the bike once we've fitted all the parts with our good friend John Barnes who has a mobile dyno. So this is the sound of the standard exhaust. <laughs> Listening to exhaust on YouTube is never going to be the same as what it will sound in real life. It does sound awesome. Hopefully it'll be a deeper rumble and also look awesome. That is the first job. Let's swap out the exhaust and then we're going to be putting the air filter. We've got lithium battery which will be fitting as well. Hopefully we have time today. We've got throttle spacers provided by Road Angels which are a fantastic number one product to use on these bikes. It just gets rid of all that slop. They've also uh, supplied us with screen protectors, which will be fitting as well. So cheers for those guys. Uh, link to their website is on the description. All of this is gonna be carbon fiber, carbon fiber tank, carbon fiber monocoque seat, uh, all supplied by our friends at 46. We've got motor course parts coming on. We've got Duke bike parts going on. What we're gonna be doing is weighing each and every product and work out basically the weight savings from that. We're four hours in, um, and as you can see, there's quite a lot to remove to fit the exhaust. So these have got to be loose, the headers, for then to be able to put the slip-ons on. Uh, all of these, uh, we will be changing to titanium. We've got the very talented Phil Smith from Storm Performance Exhaust making us a custom made titanium version hopefully that will then be cool enough not to have the heat shield that's what we're hoping anyway um, but he is designing it so if it's not we can put the heat shield back on it obviously it'll be a full six carbon one um, but i'm hoping that with the whales because it's doing a lobster tail effect we wouldn't have to do that because that'll look just awesome so here's the po8 sprint filter we're going to be using which is a pm 160s Unlike traditional aftermarket performance air filters, this isn't made from cotton or foam. It's made from polyester. By making it in that form, every hole is exactly the same. So with foam, obviously it's like a sponge, every hole is going to be different so the airflow isn't going to be constantly exactly the same all the way through. The same with cotton as well. You've got threads going at different directions and each hole is going to be a different size to another. Hence why you need to use oil in them to trap the dust so the dust particles don't go through. But with these they're so so fine that you can put up to the light and it's almost see-through. And the ridges are a lot higher than normal so then it gives a lot more airflow. As the airflow goes down, each hole is pretty much exactly the same, 
the airflow going through is all at the same speed. So you don't get any distortion of airflow going into the engine. If you, when you do come to clean it, you basically use air pressure to then blow the opposite way that the air is being traveling through. So it basically blows out all of the dust and dirt. Now you can use soap to wash it if you want and then blow it out and then you put it straight into the back into the bike. So there's no waiting 24 hours for it to dry and then put the oil and then put it into the bike. Cotton four layers is your normal street aftermarket uh, filter. So four layers and then you've got two to three layers which will be uh, a racing cotton filter and then you've got the PO37, PO8 and F185. The PO37, the holes in that filter are a lot smaller. They are able to trap finer particles of dust. So the PO37 is fantastic if you have an enduro bike and you do enduro riding quite often in dusty environments etc. It's also waterproof. It doesn't allow any water to penetrate through the uh, filter. At the PO8 here you can see the airflow for this one. Uh, this is what we're going to be using. This is a street use air filter. It's not waterproof. If you ride on the street you wouldn't be riding in a uh, torrential rain hopefully and then you've got the f-185 as you can see the airflow is just massive this is waterproof as well um, which makes it very unique you can see there's so much airflow being given into the engine that with this filter we would always suggest having your bike remapped because it is going to throw out your fuel ratio etc with the po8 you don't need to have the bike mapped you could just put it in there and ride as you will but the f185 it is for race use only so if you're looking to tune a bike and you've spent a lot of money on an exhaust there's no better way than upgrading to an f185 they retail at 215 pounds po8 is between 80 and 100 pounds the po37 is kind of in between the two if you are looking to have a track day bike um, and uh, get the best filter, then the F185 is the one to get. Now, these are used throughout World Superbike, British Superbikes, and MotoGP. They are exceptional air filters. All of these are available on our website. I'll put a link in the description below. We have plenty of stock, as you can see. Here we're fitting the throttle spacers, and basically what that does is take up a lot of the slack from the throttle, makes the throttle a lot more responsive. Easy, easy job. I even did this myself. Thanks again from the guys at Speedo Angels. They're the chaps who import these from Throttle Spaces in America. The best mod, 30 odd quid. Okay, so here it is. Four o'clock in the afternoon. So we started this around about half past 10. It's a good few hours work just to put some slip-ons on. Getting this off and the headers off is a bit of a task, but it's on. And we've got the Sprint POA air filter in. We've also got the lithium battery in and also the throttle spacers. Let's hear what she sounds like. We did have a test run a minute ago and the alarm went off, so uh, it might happen again. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, vastly different. A lot, lot deeper. The throttle feels even better. The lithium battery, we've also got plugged in. So when the bike's obviously not being used, just keep it plugged in, keep it topped up. They do look awesome. Nice, clean design. There's not too much of a gap between the exhaust and the engine where the carbon exhaust guard is. I thought it was a nice and clean look. And as the exhaust guard follows the contours of the bottom of the oil sump, which is a nice design. And then this is the uh, left-hand side. It's lower to accept clearance for the chain. It's got a slight bend to it as well. But again, it's a nice clean looking design. And again, these are on our website. We do have stock of them in the full titanium version. And so for the next build, we should have all the carbon. Everything you see, which is in plastic form, is all going to be in carbon fiber. Uh, the monocoque seat we're going to have, carbon fiber tank, and we're going for the SP design. So the carbon tank is actually gonna have like a brushed painted effect to it, uh, like a brushed aluminium, uh, but with the carbon showing through the middle. The Ducati logo, that will also be showing the carbon. So the carbon will be visible down the seam here. This is gonna be uh, quite a trick. So stay tuned, see the progress and how it continues. Cheers.